In this video, I'd like to show you how to build an unusually efficient VHF Rectenna system. There's two of them here. This is my version 2. It's running a lot of LEDs. This is, sorry, that's my version 2. This is my version 3, running three LEDs at the moment. The transmitter is actually over here. I've got the IC705 running 10 watts, literally on this little uh, mag mount whip here, okay? And this is my original version, my first VHF version here. Now, it was a little complicated, so um, as you can see here, I'm transmitting on uh, 144.650 CW, and um, I'll show the power there. It's uh, you can hard to see that. Yeah, RF power is 10 watts, of course, because that's the max this can do. So, obviously, you'd expect that one to be working very well, because the antenna is literally here. But uh, <laughs> these over here, mm, that's a different story. So, stay with me. I'm going to show you exactly how to build it. Uh, this is my last one I built last night. I'll be showing you how to build this one, because it's much simpler and very easy to build. But first of all, I'll grab this and show you. So I'm just gonna pick it up and walk around, all right? Now, what I'll do is I'll come along here. There's gonna be points, because of reflections in the house, you know, other wires and things that re-radiate, like wires in the wall that re-radiate signals so you get, you know, nulls and stuff. So let's see here. So it's a little bit dud over here, right? Now, I'll quickly go downstairs. We know it worked over in that corner. Let's see, I'll go down here and let's see if I get it in anywhere. It's a bit dark in here. I probably need to put a light on one sec. Ah, there we go. See if it's gonna pick up anywhere here. Oh yeah, so I'm now down sort of below ground level, partly. Yeah, so there's a hot spot there. Yeah, hot spot here, as you can see. You can probably see the house is nearly empty. I'm renovating, getting ready to sell and move. But yeah, oh yeah, there's another hot spot there, <laughs> okay. So I'm actually near the very front of the house now. So uh, they're very impressive. Now I won't waste any more time. Let's get on to showing you how to build it. So I'll just put some more light on and uh, oh, elbow. I'm <laughs> trying to use my elbow to switch things. All right, so. I'll bring her back here and uh, sit her down. Sorry, there we go. All right. Actually, I will show you this dead quickly. So this one's running a hell of a lot of LEDs. It has, it's adjustable. The other one's adjustable too with telescopic whips. And it's using uh, spheres at the end, which are basically foam balls with copper on. But it's also using... Um, by file of pancake coils where this one is extremely simple so uh, first of all I'll jump to the schematic and then I'll give a bit of a detail on how I've put this one together so it's extremely simple okay so I'll try to get better lighting <laughs> I should have planned this out so as you can see we have the antenna and the antenna so that's the two ends so this isn't the build this is just you know the schematic so the top element comes to two diodes, a junction between two diodes. The diodes here, they're a BAT43, they're shock keys. And, um, and I should mention the capacitors that I'm using. You, this is not critical at all, but I'm using a 100 microfarad, 25 volt DC electrolytics. I do recommend electrolytics because they store a little bit of voltage. So once the the power gets below the level for the, you know, the energy get, voltage gets too low for the diodes, for the LEDs, sorry, to, to drive, at least the um, electrolytics have held a little bit of charge, so when the next surge comes along, it's more likely to switch over very quickly. Uh, forgive my terrible terminology. Hopefully you understood what I meant. So, yeah, so we've got the two diodes, so push this way, current goes this way, this one is taking current in from this way. So, and we've got an electrolytic cap in between. You see the little positive symbol there. So a positive bias to this side. Now the positive side of the cap and where this diode leads connects down to the negative side of another cap, okay? 
and the positive side of the other electrolytics here. And same again, we have a diode with the direction uh, this way and this way, so current flowing here and from here, and down to the other antenna element. So, um, so it's pretty simple really, so you know, obviously if this is becoming positive, current can come this way and charge the positive side of this cap. If this becomes negative, it draws current in from this way, which makes that side of the cap more negative. Of course, exactly the same happening at the top, but because we've got this cap and this cap connected end to end, that's like two caps in series. So let's say, you know, if this got to uh, two volt and this got to two volt, it's adding them together, you got four volt because it's in series. We've got neg pos neg pause okay very very simple and this is where we connect our led or whatever load you might have seen my video i done a short the other day using a very similar system and powering a hvdc step up transformer creating arcs just from using a bow bank to power it so that's that side of it stick with me so these are called toro fluxes so look that up t-o-r-o and then the word flux, F-L-U-X, they're a kid's toy, basically. They can roll them along your arm and stuff, but they're a great torus, okay? So, basically, what I've got myself here is just a fiberglass rod, and it's about a metre long. And I've covered the fiberglass rod with uh, copper tape, like, uh, oh, I've got some here, sorry, copper tape it's a self-adhesive tape you can buy rolls of that and uh, so I've covered it with that and that's easily solderable so same at the other end and then you just slide the tourists on and so that they hold on I just put some tape around so these are actually adjustable I can slide this up and down along the shaft as you can see I've got this one very close to the center and ignoring up here but if I needed it to operate on a a longer wavelength I could slide that up and change the resonance and halfway along uh, the uh, fiberglass rod you can see I've got a break in the actual copper so you can see here now how it's configured from the bottom we've got our two little uh, BAT 43 diodes okay if you look closer you'll see the little black band on the right hand side it's pushing into the figure my messy soldering into the cap there and from the left hand side pulling from that cap so the uh i'm having trouble seeing so let's say the negative side here is connected across here to the positive side of this cap where we have the same sort of configuration going on and the negative side of this cap is coming out and the positive side of this one's coming out to the leds and that's running, even though I'm holding it, these three LEDs absolutely beautifully. So that's a quick rundown how to do it. Bear with me now, because I'm going to shut down the IC705 and grab a little handy talkie. One sec. And I'll just uh, end that transmission. Oh yeah, while I'm doing that. This is the original one, but it was a bit more complicated with a lot more inductance here and, and bifilar pancake coils. Although it is physically shorter, it wasn't adjustable. That's why I'm showing you the other one. Now I'll just grab a little uh, Bayo thing. I've never known how to pronounce that. So we're on the same frequency cycle there. And this is um, just running its max power, which I think is 10 watt. So let's see how we go here. Yep, you could hear it coming through the other radio. VK3, VKE testing on the frequency cycle. Okay, so you can see that's lighting up also, that one. I'll probably, I'm still working on that. I want to refine it before I do a video on it. But um, see, I'm moving quite away. I'll just zoom in now, one sec. And uh, yeah, it depends where I am. All right, so they're both still working. What I'll do is I'll just kill one of these lights. All right. Okay, so you can see my one with the multi LEDs is still working better, but I've moved across a bit and now the other one is. It all depends on, you know, how the uh, <laughs> reflections mix. So now I'm actually into the edge of the lounge room. You can see they're still actually going. Um, both of them are still going. I'll just... Um, Zoom in a bit more. 
Yeah. I'm moving further and further away. I've lost the left one, my uh, one with the multi-LEDs. That's for another video. Uh, but yeah, so now I'm actually quite a way away. I'm just on the edge of the hallway. But uh, yeah, so really impressive range on these things. So please do click like, subscribe if you're interested, throw in a comment, and uh, especially just let me know how you go. But these, it's very cool. It's unusual to be able to uh, rectify over such a distance and get such usable power like that. So um, if you try it with just a dipole without the torus or tori or spheres, you're not gonna get the same effect. This actually assists in the uh, near field, E field part of the, 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 <laughs> the signal. So basically it uh, extends the uh, near field, E field behavior. Uh, it's, I can explain all that in another video, maybe down the track, it's quite involved, but, and it's definitely left a field, but it's uh, reminiscent of what uh, Nikola Tesla was doing. 7.3, and thanks for watching. This is VK3, VKE, QRT.